Hey, this is Kyle Malone from AlucardGP.com. Welcome. Today we're going to go through the budgeting process in Dynamics GP. It is the absolute easiest thing in the world. I think everyone that owns GP uses GP, so use the budgeting process because it's so dang easy. It does exactly what you want. You can get it out of Excel, push it back into GP, uh, do all of your work in Excel, view your reports in GP, view your reports in Manager Reporter almost effortlessly. So that's what we'll cover today. Uh, this was a request um, for a topic in a, a, a webinar here. So for those of you listening, if you have other topics that you'd like to cover, certainly let me know. I'm happy to do these. I enjoy doing these. So please do let me know. But without further ado, here we go. So we're talking about the budgeting process. When I say budgeting, I mean financial GL account-based budgeting. So anytime we're messing with you know financials, anytime we're messing with GL accounts, we're going to start in the financial module here. But I'm going to go to straight to cards. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the budgets window. And what you'll see here are existing budgets. Um, I'm using the Fabricam company, so these are just kind of old, junky budgets. Um, but I don't care about any of this. I'm going to go ahead and hit new. And we're going to use the buzz, budget wizard for Excel to build our new budget. All right, what's the ID for the budget? Let's do a my 2025 budget. Again, I'm working in Fabricam. The years are a little bit off. And money making slash losing this year. As my description, how do I want to base this budget? I just want it to be the full fiscal year. I can put a date range on if I wanted to, but for this one, I want to do period one to period 12 uh, and select the date range. And we're going to do for 2025. Easy enough. All right, so this, this is pretty cool. So when you build a budget, you can either say, okay, let me look at an open year. So whether it be this fiscal year, maybe the last calendar year that you haven't closed yet, I could say use that year. And then for my opening numbers for my budget, you know, use 10% greater or less than what it was last year. So uh, that one's fantastic. I think that's probably the most used use case here. Uh, you have an other budget. So if, if you are someone that's creating multiple budgets throughout the year, okay, well, let me grab my first six months. I'm about to build my second six months. Uh, and for my second six months, I wanted to go up 10%. Uh, we'll get, I, I don't know if that's a great use case, but that is what other, other budget percent is. Historical year percent, another great option. So I'm going to go and grab a budget from last year two years ago and and that's going to be my starting numbers and then last but not least blank budget so this means i'm just going to open up my budget template everything's going to be zeros i'm going to start from scratch completely fine as well for today i'm going to use the open year percent so select my open year i'm going to do just last year 2024 and for this i want everything in 2024's um everything in 2024's open year so these sorry these are actuals let me go back and clarify on that. Open year percent, these are actual numbers. So I'm gonna pull the actual numbers from last year. Makes sense. Increase them by 10%. And that's gonna be my starting numbers for 20, um, 2025. So here, this is just pretty cool. So uh, this is just, uh, it's information for you. So um, when I build my, when I open up my budget for the first time, I could say, okay, just go ahead, you know, give me a separate tab for all these additional years. That way when I'm doing my budgeting, I can look at it year over year. Um, so that's what you get. You'll get actuals for 2020, 2021, etc. cetera. Uh, for this, I really only care about last year when I'm building 2025. So let me just select 2024. Let's go next. For here, um, today I'm only gonna be budgeting for P&L accounts. So this is just based on the account setup in GP. So anything that has a profit and loss setup, that's what's gonna come into here by default. I hit next. Uh, for here, I want all of my PL accounts. If you wanted to, you could certainly pick a range. You know, let's say I only want a certain division, uh, you know, range of naturals, whatever it is. No, I'm good. So that's it. New accounts. And then here, just, just kind of your last review. So I could go through here and I can pick and choose which accounts I really want to be in here. Uh, let's say, okay, so I'm building a, a PL report, but I also, let's go ahead and pull my, I don't know, my expense deferrals or something that I want to budget for as well. So you'd have the ability to do that. Not going to do that today. Next. All right, so this is saying, where do you want to create this Excel document that's going to be your budget? I'm doing a new budget. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. So let's call this my 2025 budget. And then here we go. So I had uh, you know roughly over 600 accounts here. It's going to take all the actuals from last year, 
increase them by 10% and create my 2025 budget that I'll be able to work with and eventually push it back into GP. And that is it. So it's opening up in Excel right now. So I actually have an Excel document saved on my desktop at this point. And here we are. So you notice on here, here is a budget for 2025 that I am working on. And then here is 2024. Remember I selected the checkbox for 2024. So this is just informational for me. If I wanted to have those additional years here, I could have selected all those and it would have shown all those out here separately as well. So what I care about is 2025. You can see I selected the 10% method from last year. So if I go and I look at period one for this account, this is 10% greater than what it was uh, for the actuals of last year. So pretty slick. Um, you know, one thing to keep in mind is in, in this section here, I have both revenues and I, if I scroll down, I have all my expense accounts. Think about like debits and credits. Anytime I'm increasing my revenue, I'm crediting my revenue. That's why you see a bunch of negatives here. If I scroll down to my expenses, you'll see positives. So definitely keep that in mind or else your budgets will be the exact opposite of what you think they are. Um, so from here, so I just, you know, anything I want to do, let's go, you know, for, uh, for this account, period two, I want it to be 10 grand. Let's go 25 grand the next month, et cetera. You get it. That's, that's literally it. If you, uh, if you wanted to, you could you know, build in formulas here. You could populate this spreadsheet from, you know, something else, but ultimately what has to be synced back into GP is exactly this. You cannot throw off the format. Uh, I think it's best to like, let's say I have another spreadsheet here. That's got all my calculations in it. All right, so let's say that this is my, uh, we'll do it this way. We'll say this is my calculation spreadsheet. It's got all these crazy formulas in it if I had it. And then this is actually what I'm going to import into Excel. What I always recommend doing before is just copying everything, highlighting it, pasting values. The fewer moving things you have going on in this spreadsheet at the time you import, the better. Uh, nothing's more frustrating than when you go to import, it throws all these errors. Well, it's because you got a formula that threw something off. So my personal suggestion is just copy and paste values make sure what you're about to import back into gp has no formulas and it is formatted exactly like this this is the format for the budget import and export in gp all right so i'm done so let's close out let's save of course all right so back to gp so we're going to pick up right where we kind of started let's go back to cards let's go to budgets select my budget now up here under Excel, import from Excel. I want to import to the budget that I just had selected, my 2025 budget. Where's your my Excel file? Here we are. And there's all the spreadsheet. Uh, there's all the tabs that I had on the spreadsheet. Let me go and grab the uh, the first one. That's where my final numbers were. Pretty nifty, pretty slick. So it's just, again, grabbing everything off the Excel spreadsheet and importing it in. So now for all intents and purposes, my budget is now in GP. So let's go take a look at it a couple different places. Inquiry, great section to go to. Uh, I can just go to the budget summary. And here I can just pick one of the accounts that I had budgeted for. Let's look at my 2025 budget. And then you'll see all of the numbers that were in my spreadsheet. Remember I added the, the 250 grand, I think I'm gonna add the 600 grand, but it's all here. It's all accounted for, um, showing the net change. So this is the increase, decrease month over month. And then my total for the year is down here at the bottom. I'm gonna make 1.9 million in this account this year for 2025. All right, so from there, so that's uh, sorry, that's a budget summary. Let's also look at budget versus actual. Obviously, it's kind of the whole point of this. Nice little window. Here are my actual numbers. Here are my budget numbers. Here are my variance, and here's how far off I am. Um, Thirty-two thousand percent off uh, for, for period five. Might want to do better than that. 
So that is the budget versus actual inquiry, also the budget summary inquiry, uh, two just simple ways to look at it account by account. Uh, we can also take a look at reports. So for reporting, I personally like doing everything in Manager Reporter. Manager Reporter is a free tool for GP. Just you know, do your financial reporting in there. It's, it's, it's a great tool. Uh, but you can also get this information right in GP. So I'm just using the reports, financial statements. And I'm going to say, let's just go ahead and print this one. And this is a summarized version of my profit and loss. But you can see here is my current year to date. And then here is the budget that I have selected in my PL setup. So pretty cool. Again, it's, it's so simple. Uh, if I were setting something up, whoops. If I were setting something up in Management Reporter, when I'm building my column, uh, if you've ever used Management Reporter, this looks probably very familiar, but basically I'm just gonna say, okay, for my budget, instead of pulling my actual numbers, so I can have a column for my actuals, I just do a separate column for my budget. So you just select your budget and that's it. And then when you generate your report here, I'm gonna get in this case, two, two columns, one actual, one budget. Uh, you could also get, you could get crafty on them, um, you know, creating variance columns and variance percentage columns, everything else you can do in Manage Reporter. That's a much larger conversation. Uh, but Manage Reporter is great for budgeting for all financial reporting. So back to GP. So let's pretend, hey, you know, I'm 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 going through my year and I want to increase, decrease my budget amount. Two ways to do it. I could open it up here. I could say, okay, let's push this back to Excel. I can make the change in Excel and then re-import it. Easy, simple. I could also go to budget transactions. Why I like budget transactions is because it is that it is a uh, it's a transaction. Uh, you have an audit trail. I can look back at the end of the year and say, okay, show me all my increases, decreases to my budget if I wanted to. Uh, so I would do you know an increase, decrease to my budget using a budget transaction. There's one other way to do this as well, and I will show that. All right, so here's my account. Uh, let's just say, okay, for period seven, uh, you know, I forgot, I'm just gonna make 2.5 million here. Post it just like you would post a journal entry. So then if I go back and I look at my inquiry, there's my $2.5 million adjustment to my budget. Another way to increase, decrease budget amounts is open back up the card, select your budget, hit open, this time using Microsoft Dynamics GP. And here, same thing. But for here, I can literally just increase, decrease the amounts, simple as possible. So why, again, I, I don't, it's up to you. Uh, this to me is it's incredibly simple, but it's also very simple to do a budget transaction. Uh, but for here, you don't really have an audit trail. Uh, and then there's also another big caveat with using this window. You can easily, easily delete budgets uh, from this window. So if you're if you're telling your users to go out there and maintain, increase, decrease their own budgets, you know maybe that's not running through you, who's in charge of the budgets. Um, if you're going to tell other people to go in here and increase or decrease their budgets. I would recommend a budget transaction because they can do less damage there. Because uh, if you're in here, let's see if I close out here, if I hit delete, bye bye budget. So very bad, just keep that in mind. Window is great if uh, people know what they're doing in here. If not, uh, you're kind of creating yourself some trouble. While I am in here, it's worth noting, there's this little lock next to the budget ID. I can actually lock my budgets. There you go. So now no one can delete this budget. No one can increase, decrease it without having the password, which me, I am the gatekeeper at this point. So that is increasing budgets, decreasing budgets, using transactions, using the card window. Uh, and I believe that is it. That is all I wanted to show today. That's it. Um, again, this is Kyle from alacartgp.com. If you guys have questions on budgeting, if you'd like to see other webinars on other topics in GP, please do shoot me an email. Definitely check out the, the website, check out the blog. Uh, this information will go up on the blog, and this will also have some uh, documentation on the blog post as well. So that's it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.